Hello and welcome to this lesson video where we'll uh, look, get to know uh, how to perform some fundamental quantity calculations for uh, earthwork uh, operations. Uh, specifically, we'll learn about the uh, calculating the quantities for the uh, following earthwork uh, items. Structural excavation, site utilities, uh, soil spoils, and uh, cut uh, fill volumes for mass excavation projects. First, uh, pit excavation is performed to remove a soil to reach the specified level for constructing the foundation of a building or other similar structures. We'll see how to calculate the excavation quantities for both small and large pits. As in the shown formula, the uh, excavation uh, volume equals the horizontal area of the pit multiplied by the average excavation depth. The uh, shown depth is on the excavation pit with horizontal dimension of 9.15 meters and 7.63 meters. You can see the excavation depth is at the corners are provided uh, which uh, were calculated as the difference between the existing and the new rates. So you will need to calculate uh, the average depth as uh, shown uh, which uh, turns out to be 2.1 uh, meters. Then the area is calculated to be 72.1 square meters. When multiplying these that two values, you will find that the excavation volume to be 151.41 bank cubic meters. The simple volume calculation is best used for small excavation pits where the excavation depth changes linearly between the pit corners. For large excavation pits non with non-uniform depths, you will need to break the excavation area into grid where a cut or fill depth uh, volume uh, value is obtained for each grid point. Large excavation pits exhibit non-linear changes in the depths or its area, so a simple depth formula cannot work here. You will use the same formula for calculating the excavation volume but the average depth is calculated differently using the shown second formula here, which is a weighted average formula. Each grid point is given a weight depending on how many grid cells surrounding it. The weight of a uh, corner uh, grid point equals to 1 because it is in the border of only one grid cell. So the four corner grid points each has a weight of 1. The border grid points have a weight of 2 and the middle points have a weight of 4. The weighted average depth formula then sums up the uh, multiplication uh, of the depth and weight of each grid point and divide the product by the sum of all weights. An exercise in this volume calculation is shown in another video. For trench excavation, the volume is calculated as the cross-sectional area times the length of the trench. The trench cross-section depends on if you are leaving the soil shape at its natural slope uh, or its angle of repose. Yeah, which is AC. Or you will use a trench box for holding the soil side vertical and not caving in the trench. Case B. We'll cover the angle of repose in one of, uh, of the next slides. When calculating the trench quantities, you will always need to know if you will use a trench box or not. Typically, trenches less than 5 uh, feet deep will, need, will not need a trench box per the requirements of the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA. 
Depending on the soil type, you can still end up with a vertical trench slides without even a trench box, like in the case of rock or clay. If the excavated soil is not loaded right away and hold off-site, it will form soil spoils that will take the variable site space that needs to be calculated. The soil spoil can take the shape of a pile or a bank depending on the excavation of fish. For spoil so piles, they form uh, beside pit excavations and they take the shape of a 3D, 3D cone. So its volume is calculated using the shown formula as third of the base circular area multiplied by the height of uh, the volume. The volume can be calculated from the excavated pit dimensions, but the base, or its diameter uh, d, and the height h are now two unknowns in one formula. So we need another formula to relate both variables, which is done through the angle of repose of the soil, which should be known from the soil investigation report. Angle of repose is unique for each soil type, and it represents the natural stable slope of the soil pile. The shown table lists the R angles for different soil types. You can see that the, the more moist the soil is, the more angle of repose it will have. Also, you can see that dry sand has the lowest angle of repose, which I'm sure you struggle with when building sand castles on the beach. So by going back to the volume formula, V equals one-third times the area times the height. The base area is circular with a value of pi d squared over 4. The height can now be related to B using the angle of repose and the triangle form by d over 2 and h. By substituting H's formula into the uh, V volume, you can calculate the diameter of the soil spoil pile by using the excavated volume V in loose units and the angle of repose. Soil banks, uh, soil banks uh, usually uh, form along a linear excavation operation, like the case in pipelines, continuous footings, and uh, trenches. Uh, the volume calculation uh, principles we discussed before uh, still apply to the spoil bank, uh, but we are now dealing with longitudinal dimension, the bank uh, length. The spoil bank has two other dimensions, the spoil height, H, and width, P. E. As such, the volume equals the triangular cross-sectional area of the bank, half times B times H, multiplied by the bank length. The angle of repose relates the H and B variables, so we can adjust the volume calculation formula to make it a formula to calculate the pile bank with B, based on the lo loose uh, volume of the excavated soil, and uh, the excavation length, and the angle of repose. We will switch gears now to volume calculations and mass excavation operations. The example uh, shown, uh, the example shown drawings are for the mass uh, earthwork uh, example that we covered in part one of this lesson. If these hypothetical dra drawings were real with complete dimensions and more cross-section views, we can perform two quantity calculations that are fundamental to plan mass earthwork operations. End area calculations and earthwork calculations. And area calculations, uh, uh, calculation is used to calculate um, the area of a road cross section at the end of a road segment. This calculation is performed for all cross sections at the ends of the segments of the roadway. And then earthwork cut and fill volume calculations are performed 
based on these n areas. End area calculations have been done in three main traditional ways. First, trapezoidal calculations involve splitting the cross-sectional area into a group of trapezoids that together follow the road cross-section shape. These trapezoids have the same width w and the height values are calculated at each w interval as a difference between the final and existing grade. Then the total cross-sectional area will be calculated using the shown uh, formula by multiplying the width interval w and the weighted sum of the heights. The weighted sum entails simple summation of all heights except for the two height values h o and h n at the two edges of the cross section where the final and existing grade lines meet. These two edge points are also known as the toe of the slope. Only half of the heights at these points is included in the volume formula as each of these edge heights are considered for only one trapezoidal shape. The shown example has six W intervals and six cross-sectional trapezoids. The slope to height HO and H6 equal to zero in this example. The second and third method represent an old and a newer way to calculate the road excavation cross section area. The second method utilizes a planning meter, which is a tool that you fix on one, uh, uh, fix one of its ends and use the other end to trace the shape you want to calculate its area. Planning, me planning meters are all tools for estimators when computer tools were not invented yet. The third calculation method utilizes computer aided, aided drafting CAD. Uh, software tools to calculate the area of a shape in AutoCAD which is one of the available commercial CAD software products you can use its command measure area to find the area of a regular uh, shape now there are uh, more advanced computer tools that are specialized for heavy construction earthwork contractors that can calculate the quantities for uh, structural and mass excavation and backfill After the end areas uh, are calculated for all roadway segments, uh, the volume of each segment equals the average of its end area, areas, A1 and A2, times the length of segment L. The L value is very dependent on the geometry of the project, so it's determined based on the estimator judgment. The shown figure is an example of how the end area calculations are used to calculate the earthwork volumes. The figure organizes the calculations following the stations that mark the location of the cross sections. They're calculated end areas, distance between two successive uh, cross sections, and earthwork volumes of each segment. The first end area is, is located at station 150, 0, 0, and has an end area of 360 square feet. The distance and the volume values for this station are uh, skipped and left blank as they require two end areas at two successive stations. The second station, 150, plus 50, has an area, uh, end area of 3,700 3, square feet and uh, away 50 feet from its preceding end area section. As such, the volume between the first and the second station equals 3,759 cubic yards, as shown in the sample calculation here. The similar calculation is performed for each pair of successive uh, station and end areas, and the total volume is calculated as 257,000 
0.018 square feet by adding up the volumes of all the segments. Please notice that all end areas are for excavation cut, not backfill or fill, because all the end areas are positives. So the uh, area calculation calculations are sign sensitive. Also, you will notice that some segments had a length of 100 feet, like the third segment that is bounded by stations 151 and 152. Probably, the project plans didn't have cross-sections details for the missing intermediate stations, or the geometry between the stations in this part, uh, in this part of the road can be uniform over a longer uh, segment length. Let's now uh, see the impact of selected distance between the end area calculations. The first figure is the same as we, we saw before. The second figure is for the same project, but with a longer segment uh, length, 100 feet, for all uh, the road segments that are resulted in less number of segments to add up their volumes. You can see the difference of the total volumes in both approaches, which accounts for about 2.5 percent differences difference the first approach with shorter segment lengths is more accurate as it captures better uh, the variations of cross-sectional area over the roadway length. this is the end of this video where you learn about volume calculations for structural and mass excavation volumes also you learned about calculating the spatial dimensions of a uh, uh, soil spoil which is very critical in planning the layout and logistics of an excavation operation. I hope you enjoy the video and uh, have a great day.